Hey guys, if your travel trailer or fifth wheel has electric stabilizer jacks that operate off a switch and they're not functioning properly, it could be something as simple as a little moisture has gotten in the motor. That happened to me, it caused a little corrosion. I went in there and fixed it. My father-in-law gave me a hint as to what it probably was and it was, there was a little spring in there that had completely corroded away. And it was only a matter of a couple dollars that I was able to fix it. Check it out. Okay, the first thing you need to do is remove the cover from the housing. Now you can access the screws. Take the two long screws out right there, remove them, and you'll be able to pull the housing right off. You will feel a little resistance because the housing is a large magnet. You can see inside there, it's a little cruddy, and that's from the rust that was caused by the water getting in. The motor is attached with four screws, two on the outside and two underneath on the inside. These are all easily accessible and not hard to remove at all. Now, grab the motor, pull straight out, and it'll come right off. The only thing left to do is remove the positive and negative wires that are attached to the brushes. All right, let's see if I can show you what I have done here, the modification I made to this. First of all, I don't work on electric motors. I can do basic stuff, but this thing was, this shaft was through this hole here, and I didn't know how to get this off of that without pulling that shaft out. This thing's held by two tabs, one there and one over here, and then two screws, one here and one here. So a tab on each side and a screw on each side. Once I took those screws out and lifted it up, you know, you could move that thing around. The brushes are here and here, and the spring in this side, you can see how rusty it looks. Somehow, there, it just wasn't a good seal. Water got in there and rusted that spring completely gone. And without that uh, brush being pushed against the shaft here, against the motor, it was not gonna work. So I had to replace the springs. I couldn't get this off. So I basically just took my knife, really sharp knife, and gently and carefully cut it here on this side and on the other side as well. You see there. So that made two pieces and I was able to get it out and you can see right there where the brushes go. I went to the hardware store and picked up a new spring. All right, so here is the old spring. See if you can see that. A really small compression spring and I just needed another one to go in the other side, but I decided to go ahead and get two if I could. Now, the brushes that they sold at the hardware store come with springs on them, and I didn't have the, they didn't have the correct side of the brush, so I picked up this spring. It's a little stiffer than the old one, but I believe if I cut that thing about the same length, I'll be just fine. I'll, it'll fit in there just right, and I should be able, yeah, so it fits right in there. I should be able to compress it with the brush on it and then reinstall it. Okay, this is my replacement spring. After I've cut it, it's about the same length. I believe it's gonna work just right. I'm gonna try to install it again. And here you see the, the one I've attached. Again, this is the one that was worn out or broken, the, the spring was out of it. Uh, once I put it all back together, I'll attach these up to the wires and I believe it's gonna work. Okay. You can see here I'm putting the other one together. The spring is in there, and now I'm compressing the spring with the brush and the wire sliding in the, in the slot as it should. So the way I held this spring back and kept it compressed so that I could install it is I held this wire down, just like that, just long enough to install it. And like I said, it's, the spring's in there, it's compressed. The brush is right where it needs to be. I'm just holding that wire that's attached to the brush to hold it back so I can install it. All right, I have it attached again. I only thing I've left off so far is this cover. I'm gonna clean that up before I put it on there. Um, the gaskets around here were all worn out. They just crumbled and I just went and scraped those out. I'm gonna take just some silicone and go back over around all of this to kind of seal it up. The hardest part about this, honestly, was the two screws in there where 
the wires attach. So you attach the brushes to these wires and then just screw them into a little, a little hole. It's, it's just so small. Once you put your fingers there to do it, you can't see it. And uh, it just took me a little bit to get that part done. And then attaching these screws, this is a magnet. So when you start putting these long screws in there, they attach to the magnet and they won't go in straight. It's, it's kind of a challenge to get those in. Okay, when I first tried this, when I pulled the, uh, push the switch up there earlier to retract it, nothing happened. So I don't know if it's because there's no gaskets in here now and it's pulled down a little bit tighter, but I backed off these screws about a half a turn and everything worked great. I did oil up, I sprayed some WD-40 on those, on that threaded rod there. Pushing the switch to extend it. It goes about the same speed as it did before. Nothing's changed about the motor. I just added a, a spring in there where it was before. So this is exactly how it worked before. I hope this video helps. If you have the same issue or something similar, maybe you can follow this video and it will help you along to save $300. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day.